And then they went to go look at the vents, and it was because of poor ventilation. Those were not being cleaned properly. So now you, all, you have all these contaminants being blown around in the surgical room. Patients cut open, you got the contaminants floating in. Okay, poor ventilation. Okay, let's talk about the surgical team. Again, we're talking about the operating room. The operating room. This is what you're going to see as a technologist entering the room to perform an x-ray or an ultrasound procedure. The OR team is going to consist of a surgeon. The surgeon is the primary physician who plans and performs the surgical procedure. So this individual will be the one working on the surgical the surgical site. Okay. Number two is the surgical assistant. Remember in the previous slide, the surgical assistant can either be another physician, okay? It can also be a nurse, it can also be a technician. But the surgical assistant here, we're talking about here a secondary surgeon or a surgical resident, resident, one that's training to be a doctor. You can have more than one assistant. So you may have one, two, three, even four physicians working on the patient during a surgical procedure. Number three here is a scrub nurse or a scrub technician. They also dress in sterile attire and they set up the sterile field for operation and assist the surgeons by presenting sterile instrument and equipment needed for the procedure. Okay, are you guys following what's happening here so far? Are these guys sterile? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are these guys sterile? Mm -hmm. Sterile? Mm -hmm. Okay, so sterile, sterile, sterile because they are directly involved in the invasive procedure. Patient's gonna be cut open. Only those wearing sterile attire can touch or manipulate or be in close proximity to the invasive or surgical site. Okay, the anesthesiologist, this is the doctor that specializes in pain management. They are the ones who anesthetize or give medication to the patient during the procedure. They're the ones who knock them out. Okay, they're the bartenders, okay? And depending on the complexity of the procedure, instead of a doctor providing the alcohol, it might be the nurse anesthetist, okay? So the nurse anesthetist, not a doctor, but a specialized nurse can also provide the patient with knockout drugs and pain medication, okay? Now, with that said, are they sterile? Are they, are they gonna be on top of the opening or the surgical cut? No. No, they won't, no, they're not. So, it is not necessary for them to wear sterile attire. They can enter the room in their, in their scrubs. What else do, we, do they need? A mask. A hat. A mask. And a mask. And that's it. Okay, so they're not involved. They're not there touching the patients. They're so they not there touching so the patients. they don't people. scrub in. They they're just... not scrubbed in. It's only those that are direct. The key here is directly involved with the procedure at the invasive site at the site where there is a cut or an opening. Okay, that's where you have your surgeon, your surgical assistant, and your scrub nurse or technician. They're the ones that's gonna to be touching the opening, handling the sterile equipment. All others do not apply. The circulating nurse. A circulating nurse is the one that makes sure that all the protocols are being followed, but they're also gonna be the ones who is gonna be like the gopher. Okay, you know what I mean by gopher? Go for this, go for that, go get this, go get that. Let's just say for instance, the surgeon doesn't have a particular equipment or instrument on their table, or they need certain drugs for the procedure. They are sterile. Remember, everything else in the department is not. So they can't go opening up the cabinets and grabbing things. This is where the circulator comes in. The circulator will grab those extra equipment, extra drugs, extra instruments for those 
individuals here who are sterile. Okay. So that's kind of like their non-sterile assistant. Remember we talked about the dirty and the non-dirty tech? Mm -hmm. Okay. This kind of applies here. These guys are going to be the clean or non-dirty personnel, and these are going to be your dirty personnel. Any questions here on the circulator? So you don't transfer the um, like pathogen to to people like to different category. Now we have we have right because they're not directly. Is... Yeah, they're just they're just kind of like the the working the, the backstage. So they're not they're not directly involved. They are they are involved in the well being of the patient, but they're not on top of the patient <coughs> where the opening is, and they're not touching them. They're not touching the opening. They're simply just giving the medication. The medication is given outside of the sterile area. The circulator is going to be circulating the room and um, getting, again, the equipment, sterile equipment for the doctors or the surgeons and opening up the packages for them. Because they, they can't touch the packaging either. It's only the inside of the packaging that is sterile. So these non-sterile personnel will open up the package and the physicians or the surgeons will get their equipment out of the package. All right, so again, you have this individual here who was on the outside, they washed up their hands, now they entered the operating room, still wearing their scrubs, and what they're gonna do here is they're gonna put on a sterile gown, like so, okay? To cover up my non-sterile attire. It's now covered and there's a separation between what's the inside and the outside. The gown itself is packaged in a, a sterilized packaging. So this stuff here has been sent to uh, a company that removed all the microorganisms as well as their pores. So this spore, so this is sterile. So those are, are they, they reuse those? They no, no, no. These, these are for single use only. Okay. So once you're done with them, you gotta toss them. But they're packaged in a, uh, they're packaged sterilely in a special uh, type of uh, packaging. Okay. All right, so I put this on, and notice there are ties on the back. You've got the non-sterile personnel tying up the scrubbed personnel because I'm sterile. I can't be going back here and tying myself up because what's exposed here? Scrubs. Okay, it's my non sterile tire. So if I go back here and I start tying myself up, I've now contaminated myself. Okay, so we're going to get an assistant. Here is a circulator that's helping the surgeon put on their sterile attire. Okay, now keep this in mind, okay? Non sterile touching a sterile part of the gown as they're tying them up. So, with that said, is the backside of the doctor considered sterile? No. 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 They've contaminated it. Okay? This will make sense when we talk about areas of sterility on the scrub personnel. The backside, especially, is not considered sterile. Okay? So, what that means is that they are constantly facing the patient, they never turn their back to the patient that's on the table because it's not sterile, so they're constantly facing the patient. Okay. So notice the non-sterile personnel is assisting sterile personnel so they don't contaminate themselves. The scrub is considered the sterile person. Who is the scrub? Surgeon. You got the surgeon, who else? Assistant. The assistant, who else? Technician. Scrub nurse, scrub nurse or the scrub technician. <clears throat> they're all scrubs. Okay. The parts of the surgical gown considered sterile are the sleeves. Okay. So the sleeves are considered sterile from here to about the shoulder. <clears throat> the cuffs are not. The sleeve is, but the cuffs are not. The cuffs are not considered sterile. Okay. 
so it's just the sleeves. Cuffs are not sterile. Sterility stops at the shoulders. The, ax the axillary part especially is not considered sterile. Although you are wearing a sterile gown, The axillary, the armpits, are not considered sterile. Why not? That's where bacteria grow. That's because it gets smoosh. You sweat. That's where you get the bacteria. Remember that body odor we were talking about? Okay. And this is why you see, again, in movies, you always see the doctors always standing up like this, with their hands up here. Okay. Let's just pretend I have gloves on. Okay. So they're always standing like this. If you see them doing this, this is inappropriate, okay? Because this is dirty, okay? So you'll either see them standing like this, you'll see them standing like this, okay? You see them standing like this, you see them like this. Me, when I'm standing up, if uh, in a OR type of procedure <coughs> in radiology, I'm always standing like this. Okay? But you'll never see me with my hands in my armpits. Okay? Do you ever see them with their hands down by their side? Okay? They're not by their side. You always see it above their waist. The reason why it's above their waist is because anything below the waistline is not considered sterile. You guys got that? Anything below the waistline is not considered sterile. It doesn't matter how tall you are. You can be four foot tall if your hands are below your waist. It's not sterile. If you're six, seven, if your hands are below your waist, it's not sterile. Okay? It is a standard type of practice. Anything below your waist is not sterile. So your arms are always kept above your waist. And not in your armpits, but above your waist. Yes? Yes, the cuffs themselves are, are, stretch, are stretchable. It makes them porous, so they have a tendency to absorb, absorb moisture. So when you put on your sterile gloves, the gloves are covering the cuffs. Now this individual has to make sure that he or she is not touching anything else in the environment that's non-sterile. So the only thing that's going to be sterile right now is the instrument table and the patient that was draped with the sterile cover. Okay. Now, again, please pay close attention to this. The parts of the surgical gown considered sterile are the sleeves, except for the axillary area and the cuffs, and the front of the gown from table level to a few inches below the neck. So in other words, okay, it's got to be a few inches below the neck is considered sterile. Up here, anything above is not. So if you have an itch, you see this in the movies, if you have an itch or you're sweating, don't you see, how, don't you see another assistant patting them on the head? Or if you have an itch, they're scratching that area of their face, okay? Sometimes I'm wearing protective uh, glasses and I have my assistant, I also say, you know what, can you adjust my glasses because I can't touch it. So they'll come in and they'll push my glasses back on my face. Okay? I can't touch anything from here on up. Oh, you can remember everything you need. You will. It's from practice. It comes there's, a lot, right? there's a lot of rules. You thought, well, you thought you were just there to just shoot x-rays? <laughs> remember what I said, our job has evolved. We were doing so much now that other uh, professional personnel used to do. We're doing it now. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? So, here's, a, here's another thing, okay? Remember, in nothing below my waist side is not sterile. Well, I got an itch. <laughs> what do you do? Assistant. <laughs> Assistant, exactly. No. <laughs> We have doctors who carry their pagers in their phones and they're wearing it in their, in their pockets because they forgot to remove it. It goes buzzing and ringing. Guess who has to reach in there and answer it for them? The circulator. 
Sometimes I think they leave it in there on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You would ask the circulator to come and fix your glasses, right? Mm -hmm. Then you would fix the patient, but then you said that they're not like scrubbed. Yeah, so again, so as long, again, you got to be conscious of what's in, in front of you. So when they come fix my glasses, I'm like this. Yeah, so I'm facing my assistant like this. So I'm leaning away from them, but all they have access to is my face. Oh, okay. Yeah, again, being conscious of the environment. Okay, a sterile person should keep his hands in sight and at waist level or above. Remember, waist up. Only the tabletop, okay, if this is my surgical table, only my tabletop is sterile. Anything that hangs off the edge is not sterile. Okay, so let me pull out one of my surgical trays. This is an example of some this is gel package. Remember the outside is not sterile, so anybody can touch the outside. It's the inside that is sterile. So if you're gonna handle the inside contents, what should I be wearing? Gloves. What kind of gloves? Not just regular sterile. gloves, they sterile. have to be sterile, sterile gloves. gloves. Remember it's sterile on sterile. Sterile on sterile. If it's not sterile on sterile, it's now become contaminated. contaminated. It has to be sterile on sterile. So the outside I can handle. Okay? It's going to be the inside, it's going to be sterile. It needs to be handled with a uh, sterile, sterile blood. So the surgical technician is the one who's going to be opening up the sterile packaging, okay? So as me as a circulator, I'm going to open up the package, okay? The inside is what's, what's sterile, so I'm going to open up the package. So now that wearing this, uh, the sterile uh, packaging can now grab the packaging from inside the cover, place it on the table. Now before I open up my instrument tray, is there something I should do with the table first? It should be wiped down. I'm going to wipe it down with what? Sterile. Can't sterilize it. Disinfect. Disinfect it. Okay. It's going to be a disinfectant. 99.9%. .9%, remember? Okay. So now I'm going to open up my tray. Only that on top of the table is considered sterile. Anything that hangs off the edge is not considered sterile. Okay? Because I can do this. Remember, you have non sterile personnel that are walking around. They can brush it, brush up against it. Okay? They're not doing it on purpose, it just happens. You may be working in a tight, tight area, or they're not conscious, and so they rub up against it. Okay, so if that happens, okay, again, that part of the area is not considered sterile. Okay, so it's only the tabletop. And here's the other, here's the other thing that you guys need to make note of. The tabletop and one inch from the edge, one inch from the edge. Outside of that one inch from the edge, okay, is considered non-sterile. I saw a hand going up. Yes. Um, so you said that in order to uh, handle the table equipment, you have to have sterile gloves. Yes. Yeah, so now I can't touch it with with even regular gloves. I gotta have 
sterile gloves to handle anything on my <coughs> sterile tray now. So for that to happen, you have to have someone help you put on your gloves? No, you put on your gloves yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a certain way of doing it and okay. we'll show you. We'll show you, okay, good question. So again, only the tabletop and within one inch of the edge is considered sterile. Anything that hangs off the edge is not sterile. It's just a standard, it's just protocol. I mean, it still is considered sterile, but just for safety, we just say it's non-sterile, it's just a standard. Safety precaution, okay? Now, as a radiologic technologist, whether there you to shoot an x-ray or an ultrasound, you may be called in at the request of the surgeon to perform imaging procedures. Are you gonna be sterile? Are you going to be on top of your patient? Are you going to be also on top of the uh, instrument table? Are you? Yeah. No? No, you're not. You're not. Okay. So then you would not be wearing sterile attire. You'll just be wearing the scrubs that the department issued you. What else are you going to wear? Mask. Mask. Hat. Okay. Those are your minimum requirements when you enter the room. And you're also going to be entering the room with what? Because you're there to take some images. Your x-ray equipment, your x-ray equipment, your ultrasound machine. Before you bring that in, what are you going to do with your machine? You're going to wipe it down. Dust it and wipe it down. But did you, did you say the previous page that the technician with the doctor, you know, no, uh, previous, this one, you know, yeah. So the third one is a scrub nurse or technician. Mm -hmm. Do we consider as a technician if you want to enter to the surgical room? For example, is if you want to put the catheter, catheter in the uh, patient. What kind of catheter? <coughs> huh? Those ones, they put it over here. Okay. I, yes, 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 okay. However, that's part two of my discussion. Okay. Right now what we're strictly talking about here is the operating room. Who are those technicians now you're talking about? These are those who are OR technicians. OR they're not, technicians. Yeah, they're not technologists. They're not rap techs. Okay, got it. They are OR, they're o, they're OR technicians that are specifically there to work in the OR. It's like scrub techs, right? Like scrub techs. These are ones who have been trained to assist doctors in doing this different types of surgical procedures. Okay, okay so they're not, they're not rap techs or ultrasound techs. They're their own techs, yes. You said for um, rad techs, they don't have to be scrubbed in, but ultrasound techs, they'd be in direct contact with the, the patient, right? No. Okay. You may be bringing in the equipment, and guess what? You're handing the transducer okay. over to the doctor. So then what you will be doing is you'll be manipulating the equipment. Oh. Yeah. So you don't have to be sterile. Okay. Now, the probe that you're going to give them, they have to put in a special type of what we call a, a condom mm -hmm. to... Um, put a uh, protective uh, surgical uh, barrier between the doctor and the equipment themselves. So we'll put on a sterile condom on the probe so now the doctor can hold it and handle it. Okay, so you're gonna be there to, uh, to manipulate the, the instruments on your ultrasound machine. Okay. Good question, guys, very good questions. Okay, so you may get called in, you may get called in as a technologist, Prior to the procedure, as they're setting up the patient, because okay. we'd also like you to just go in. See these surgical tables here? If you're a rad tech, underneath the tabletop here, there is a slot that will allow you to place your image receptor underneath the table. Okay, this I'm talking about your cassettes, your image receptor. Okay, you can place them underneath the table. So. When you have that all ready to go, you have less chances of causing contamination later on when the patient is draped. Okay? So now you have your image receptor underneath. All right, so you may get called in before, you may get called in during, okay? And you may also get called in back to the surgical room after everything is done. Sometimes you get called in because they want to make sure that they didn't leave any instruments in the patient, so then you take an x-ray. We do that. It happens a lot of times, when you're doing a procedure, they do what's known as a count. So when the patient is closed, they're counting all 
their sponges, they're counting all of their needles, they're counting all of their blades, and they're counting all of their instruments to make sure that everything's accounted for. But there are times where they're missing a needle, they're missing a sponge, they're missing an instrument, and guess who they call? They call us to take an x-ray to make sure they didn't leave anything inside the patient. <coughs> okay? But they also may call, call us to make sure that, um, especially if it's like orthopedic and they're putting hardware in the patient, they'll call us in for post-procedural type of examination to make sure that everything's in place before they take the patient out of the, the surgical suite. Okay. So before, during, and after. When you're calling, being called underneath uh, uh, during the procedure before, you're placing the image receptor uh, underneath the table. You need to be familiar with what's known as a sterile corridor. Be familiar with that term, sterile corridor. The sterile corridor is the area, is the area between the surgeon and the the surgic, uh, sorry, the, pa the surgeon, patient, and the instrument table. It is this area right here. Okay. Nobody is allowed to pass through this corridor because this is considered a sterile area. Now, as a technologist, a rat tech, if you're going into the room to place an image receptor in underneath the table during the procedure, you've only got three areas. You've got the foot of the table, you've got this side of the table, or you've got the head of the table to place your image receptor in. You cannot go in here to place your image receptor underneath. You cannot go in the sterile corridor. Okay. Now, remember, what if I get called in during the procedure and I need to place my image receptor underneath after the patient is straight? How am I going to do that? I've got all this covering in here. Am I going to contaminate anything? Am I going to contaminate anything by going underneath the drape to put my image receptor in? Remember that rule of thumb. Anything below what? The edge is not considered sterile. So me, as a technologist, I can grab this drape at the end, lift it up, put my head underneath and I can put my image receptor underneath. Here's the key though. You don't want to hold your drape above the level of the edge. You still have to maintain it below the level of the edge while you're trying to get your image receptor underneath. Because what you've done now is if you do this, everything that was on the edge starts to fall back into your sterile field. If the doctors and nurses see you do that, you're out of the room. Send me somebody else. This tech doesn't know what they're doing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll just tell you, hey, put it down, put it down. You're going too high. Yes. The surgery like laparoscopy, arthroscopy, those one that has a scopy, uh -huh. are the doctor himself or herself doing this scope or they bring a, a, a rat technician? Or yeah, te technologists, no, they don't need us. It's just simply a scope, so the doctor will perform that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't need us only for x-ray. Okay. Now, remember you also got the head of the table. Who is at the head of the table? What's behind the strip on the other side? The anesthesiologist. The anesthesiologist. Remember the anesthesiologist we're talking about? He or she will be on the other side, at the head end, where they're monitoring the ET tubes, the breathing apparatus, this, this, this. okay, <laughs> your IVs and things of that nature. This is where they're giving the drugs to the patient. So they have an IV running all the way up to where the doctor is. He sits there, okay, on his iPad, listening to his iTunes, okay. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a whole different environment nowadays because now you've got the, the younger doctors coming in, the older doctors <coughs> are leaving. So it's not all about, um, it used to be that the older doctors felt like they were entitled. They thought they were God. Okay. Now you got these new guys coming in, and they're all just totally into this. Let's get this done, rock and roll. Okay, so you walk into a surgical suite. Guess what's going to be blasting? Music. Beyonce on the background. <laughs> okay, there will be music going on because it's also been a study that music sets the tone of the environment. 
It helps individuals. There are, there are certain people